Welcome here with Money, Money, Money. I'm Samira Abdi. Most often we're so focused on scrimping, scramping, saving and investing that we forget that spending and spending wisely is as important as any saving or investment habit. What should you be spending on and which are the good spending habits that you need to nurture and how do you do that? Firoz Aziz of Anandrati Private Wealth Management joins in to answer all of these questions. Firoz, is there actually a list of what are the good spending habits? I mean, I can imagine things like say insurance or you know even healthcare uh, plans for that matter. But can the scope be broader than just that? I mean, what are the top four, five or six things that you'd put on your list? See, I'll say uh, anything which adds value to yourself is a very good spending habit. Okay, uh, by which I mean anything which actually enhances your okay. capability or your skill and actually eats away some time where you would actually be doing spending wrongly. Now, okay. For example, if you are into reading, hmm. if I actually have good books at home, maybe I might skip a movie. And I'll save something. Mm. So something which keeps you occupied for longer are good spending mm. habits to my mind where okay. you don't need uh, recreation. So to get specific, I would say uh, something, uh, like a, uh, uh, something like a yoga instructor mm. coming to your place could mm. be a good uh, spending habit. Uh, your health care could be a spend, uh, good spending habit. Uh, if you look at spending habits from a, from a financial perspective, uh, spending on, on, on health insurance could mm. be a very, very good uh, spending habit. There are several, uh, but yeah, you know, job broader spectrum the concept is that anything which occupies time is a good spending habit mm. anything which adds value to yourself is a good spending habit to my mind. okay so in that case would something like say a retirement be considered a good spending or would you rather put it in the basket of investments I would actually categorize it as investments because you're investing for your future. So it would not be completely a spending. It would be setting aside some money for your invest uh, on, on your retirement, which would be an investment. But importantly, hmm. that is the only goal in one's life, which is a certainty. Hmm. Right? Because getting your child married, hmm. my, my, the child might be capable enough to accumulate enough money to get himself or herself married. But retirement is something which hmm. you have to take care of yourself. So hmm. if you categorize that spending or investment, hmm. it is equally more important irrespective of the bucket you categorize it in, into. Okay, so you mentioned calling a yoga instructor home, right? So I, you know, all of these, like say a gym membership, an extracurricular hobby that you might want to pick up, all of these, I suppose, would uh, come under the same uh, header, right? Uh, but should these really be categorized as good spending habits? I mean, isn't this just something um, uh, else that you spend on over and above your spending or investment or saving? No, I would categorize them as good spending habits. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, it helps you actually be energetic enough the entire day maybe, mm. right? And your productivity shoots up. Now, for example, I, I have started uh, a spending habit which looks a little uh, extraordinary in terms of expense, but I call a person who would actually a masseuse home, mm. right? Every week. So I have a good night's sleep the next day and that's uh, that improves my uh, body circulation, whatever health habits it has, uh, health benefit it has, but that's an expensive fare, but I think it's adding value to me uh, because I'm energetic and my productivity for the subsequent couple of days at least uh, is significantly higher and I'm looking forward to it over the weekend anyway. So. Okay, so basically these are feel-good factors, right? That you're saying it's okay to spend on uh, stuff like this. But taking this logic forward, uh, you know, like I would say, for example, that remodeling my home is something that's feel-good for me. I mean, where would, uh, how far can one stretch this list? See, uh, very importantly, uh, of course, see the purpose of money is to buy yourself some happiness okay of course there are some things which can't be bought with money but there's a lot of happiness which money can bring so you have to as an individual list down what are my uh, items which actually make me feel happy and 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 see whether it's if as long as your investments are not being compromised then spending is wise Hmm. If you're actually going to be uh, compromising on investments to actually feel good. Now, for example, you say that I have to do my, redo my house. Now, that might actually hamper your contingency fund maybe. Then, then it's a sure no-go no or no non-starter at all. 
Okay, so you know, by that same logic, this list is actually quite endless. Uh, there's a regular servicing of your car, for example. Now, whether or not it comes into your contingency, eats into it, it is something that you need to spend on how much ever it may cost. By that logic, even taking an annual vacation for that matter, you know, even, I mean, would you say it's a priority even if it's eating a little bit into your contingency? No, I, I would say that... Uh, um, actually, if it if it actually eats into your kitty of the rainy day, then you're better yeah. off living without it. So spendings have to be must have, mm. uh, and the other are good to have. Mm. The good to have expenses can actually be compromised, but the must have can't be, mm. right? So I think redoing your house is a good to have uh, mm. goal uh, or an expense, not not a must have, because you already have a specific kind of a modeled house, so you don't have to remodel it unless. Uh, you are actually not dipping into your contingency fund and that's a sure no, no. You know, a lot of people actually put waiting for uh, the sale season to begin under the good spending habit, right? But it's something that has never appealed to me because for the simple logic that you end up buying things just because they're cheaper, you may, may not need it. The stuff that you've actually waited for, uh, you know, the need may not be there anymore by the time the sales arrive or you may just end up buying something that you're not satisfied with. Is this something that you would categorize as a good spending habit is actually waiting for the discount season? Actually, or no. even going to a thrift store for that matter? Correct. I, I think uh, you're absolutely right. There are surveys done saying that the the things which you buy over or during sales are hardly used. Mm. So you're absolutely right. When you're actually not buying it at discount, you're buying only something which is necessary. Hmm. Actually, sale is a marketing gimmick to actually take more stuff off the shelf and into homes. Yeah. So I think you should not fall for that trap. You would be buying two shirts instead of one and you might end up not using the other one and, and that'll, that'll, that'll that will gather dust. So limited mainly to say the purchase of white goods then? Correct. Yeah, for sales where, where there is white goods, you can't have two air conditions uh, yeah. for a room which is 100 <laughs> square meter. So, so I think I think you're absolutely right. That's a big myth which uh, everybody falls prey to during mm -hmm. sale. I would actually get more value, but you would get lesser value because you're bringing stuff which is not valuable for you. Yeah, and this is something that you learn only with age, I guess. <laughs> All right, so let's take a break on that note. And up next, we'll actually tell you how your spending habits should be changing as you grow older. Stay tuned to Money, Money, Money.